Hello and welcome to History Time. These are days when social and other forms of media are perpetually talking about just one wedding. Who was invited? Who came? What did they wear? How long the festivities went on? What were the kinds of events? What was the food served? People are talking about nothing else. 74 years ago, the same thing happened in Madras, that is Chennai. And that was the wedding of S.S. Vasan's daughter. If this is the Ambani wedding, that was the Gemini wedding. Let us see what happened in that event 74 years ago and why it still exercises such a hold on public imagination. Vasan was a self-made man. He had come from very, very humble background in Tirutturai Pundi and later in Trichy and finally had made his way to Madras. Here, he had tried various occupations. He had become a mail order salesman. He had written books. Finally, he acquired a magazine called Ananda Vigadan and made it a success. And then later, he acquired a burnt studio, rebuilt it and named it as Gemini Studios. He was enormously successful in both the magazine as well as in the film industry. And in the 1940s in particular, it was said that no film made by Gemini Studios could be a flop. You had films like Mangamma Sabadam, you had films like Abu Apurva Sahodararhal, and then came Chandra Lekha in 1948. In one stroke, Vasan showed the whole country that a film could be made in Madras city and it could become a pan-Indian hit. He became a national figure, an icon. Everything that Vasan did was big. For him, scale was all that mattered. His films were big. The publicity that he offered for those films was big. The budgets of the films were very big. Everything was grand. And therefore, the returns were also big. Parson planned everything on an immense scale. It was no wonder that he was known as the Cecil B. DeMille of Tamil cinema. And therefore, when this man's daughter was to be married, was it any wonder that it would be a grand spectacle? That wedding happened in 1950. In order to conduct it, Vasan purchased a new bungalow on Edward Elliott's road, which is today Radha Krishnan Salai. It was known as India House and it was the residence of the industrialist C. Rajan. When Vasan acquired it, he renamed it Gemini House. It was a huge bungalow with a large garden and this was going to be the venue for the wedding. The wedding was not just a one-day event. It was a five-day event planned in the month of May 1950. The wedding of Lakshmi Narayani, the daughter of S.S. Vasan, to G.S. Mani. But the gossip and the news began to circulate right from January 1950 onwards. The whole of the Gemini Studios and Ananda Vigadan, the staffers geared themselves up to ensure that this was conducted on the scale in which the boss was accustomed to conducting anything. The invitation card itself became a sensation. It had after all been prepared by the arts department of the Gemini Studios and the artists in Ananda Vigadan. People began to ask if someone else had received the invitation. Great was the joy if you got it and loud were the lamentations if you did not. People began to try all kinds of tricks to ensure that they had got an invitation. And when they did, the news and the discussions turned to all that was on offer a five-day event with music and dance performances, all kinds of things. And, I'm, and they were all sure that the food would also be of the same level. When the month of May came, crowds began to stand outside Gemini House. And as May 19th approached, the crowds began to increase. Police had to be called in. The guards of Gemini Studios were stationed outside. But even then, people began to gate crash. They were that curious to see what were the kind of gifts that were being given to Vasan's daughter. 
Vasan, as I said, was large in everything that he did. And he was large hearted too. He decided to open Gemini House so that the public could come in and see whatever there was that had to be seen. And when they filed in, in orderly queues, they were taken into the house where they saw beautiful rosewood cupboards with all the gifts displayed. They walked through it all and when they came out, they had yet another surprise. Vasan had decided that everybody who came had to be fed. The house was not big enough for accommodating so many people. And so tokens were given and people were sent off to eat in a temple, in schools nearby and in the floors of Gemini Studios. For almost five days, a large part of Chennai's population feasted off Vasan's kindness. In the meanwhile, the wedding was reaching its peak. On May 19th, there was a procession to welcome the bridegroom to the venue. The crowds were like that of the Aravati Mover festival in the Kapalishwara temple. The whole of Mailapur had to be cordoned off and to the music from Nagaswaram's, the bridegroom came in a stately flower bedecked car to the venue. And on the 20th, the wedding happened. It was just not a wedding of family and friends. The entire Madras government cabinet, central ministers, film stars, film producers, film directors, technicians, playback singers, and then a large chunk of Bollywood, because Vasan was by then a sensation in Bollywood as well. And they all came not because Vasan paid them money, but because they had great love and respect for this man who had uplifted an entire industry. The numbers that came to attend the wedding is of not is not recorded anywhere, but all we know is that the figures were enormous. There were music programs practically on a continuous basis. G. N. Balasubramaniam, M. S. Subalakshmi, D. K. Patamal, Nagaswaram by T. N. Rajaratnam Pillai, and then there were dance performances: Kumari Kamala, Lalita Padmini and Ragini, Vijayanti Mala, and so on. The pandal that was put up outside Gemini house in the garden for the wedding itself, that was a sensation. People came to see the carpentry work of the Gemini studios technicians to see what they could do. And this is how the wedding went on. It was said that the gifts and the feasting was of such a level that the prices of all commodities from gold to curry leaves began to go up all around Madras city almost a month before the wedding actually took place. Ashoka Mitran has written beautifully in his book, 14 Years with the Boss, about how Vasan conducted his daughter's wedding and what the impact was. For years, they spoke of Vasan's daughter's wedding as the grandest event the city of Madras had ever witnessed. For a whole week in 1950, the citizens of South Madras saw the moon at noon, the sun at midnight, Men walked sideways on a hand and leg. Birds stood as lampposts. The choicest music crystallized into diamonds. The smell of the most extravagant South Indian vegetarian food hung heavily in the air that people breathed. The cows and buffaloes of Madras forgot to grace. The Jatka horses danced and the waves of the Bay of Bengal stood still at their highest point to watch the fun. And in this manner, the wedding concluded. Vasan was, however, not satisfied. He believed that because of the crowds, many of the VIPs whom he had invited, some had stayed away and the others he could not attend to personally when they came to the wedding. In order to make amends, he decided to invite people to his house in groups of 100 on a daily basis for the next 30 days. People came home for dinner, were entertained with music and in this manner, 3,000 people came for the next one month and partook of Vasan's hospitality. The entire proceedings of the wedding was recorded on cinematograph and then Gemini Studios produced a two-reel version of it which was screened to all visitors who came to the studios itself. That was in 1950 and authors like Ashoka Mitran, stars like Gemini Ganesan, and others have waxed eloquent on how the wedding happened. Six years later, 
Vasan conducted his son's wedding on a similar scale. That was not in Gemini House. It was held in the plot where the Music Academy stands today. At that time, there was an old bungalow called Sweet Home that stood on the grounds where the Music Academy is now. And that had been demolished in order to put up the present auditorium. The Music Academy needed money for its construction. Vasan then was a vice president of the Music Academy and therefore he took the place on rent and that is where he conducted his son's wedding. But because of the impact of the first wedding, the second one does not appear to have stayed on in public memory to the same extent. But Ashoka Mitran has written one interesting episode about the second wedding. Apparently, every employee of Gemini Studios and that of Anand Vigidan received a rosewood box inside which there was a dhoti, an upper garment and a silk sari for the wife of the employee. The box was duly taken home and the women apparently were not satisfied with whatever colour they got and Mrs. Vasan got to know about it and she said that the next day whoever needed to exchange their saris could come to Gemini house and do it. Nobody anticipated that all the wives would all land up. 3,000 women landed up the next day on R.K. Saleh and the whole of Gemini house had to be cordoned off. The police complained and then Vasan issued a three-word memo to his staff, no sari exchange. And with that, matters were brought under control. That was the wedding of 1950. And to imagine that we are still talking about it 74 years later. But that was Vasan a legend in his lifetime and later. If you like this episode, do share it, like it and subscribe to this channel. And I will be back with you with further stories from the history of Madras that is Chennai. Bye for now.